We start tonight with breaking news. The Department of Justice is appointing a special counsel to investigate Russian government efforts to influence the 2016 presidential election. Former FBI Director Robert Mueller will lead the investigation. Now, this comes just 24 hours after former FBI Director James Comey's bombshell memo, in which he claims President Trump asked him to drop his probe of former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Associates of Comey are now saying tonight he most definitely wants the opportunity to testify in public. Virginia Congressman Jerry Connolly joins us from Capitol Hill. Congressman, uh, you know the latest news. Your reaction to the DOJ appointing a special counsel to investigate the Russian alleged ties to the Trump uh, campaign. Good to be with you, Bruce. Um, I think it's a welcome development. I think uh, the events of this last week, one upon another upon another, uh, frankly, demand a special counsel independent of the White House, independent of the Attorney General, who can uh, take us where the facts lead us, however uncomfortable the results may be. And I think we've got that in Robert Mueller tonight. Uh, for people who don't know, what can you tell us about Mr. Mueller? Uh, what, what kind of man is he? What's his track record? Well, I, it, Robert Mueller was, in fact, the uh, director of the FBI. He, uh, he has a close working relationship with former FBI director fired by Trump, uh, James Comey. He was involved in a famous incident with Comey uh, when they believed that the White House counsel under George W. Bush uh, wanted to get wiretap authority on an illegal basis, uh, bypassing the normal judicial system, the attorney general had had gallbladder surgery and was in great pain in a hospital room, and uh, Alberto Gonzalez, the White House counsel, rushed to get him to sign in that pain and fog, and Comey and Robert Mueller rushed to the hospital, beat him, uh, to the hospital bed to protect John Ashcroft, the Attorney General, from making that bad decision. I think that shows a lot in terms of independence of judgment and the willingness to stand up even to the White House. Okay, with people trying to keep score of all these investigations now, how does what happened today at the Department of Justice affect what's happening over there where you are on the legislative side, if at all? You, it, it, you know, I think they're, I think best way to see it is they're, they're parallel and separate. So we've got the intelligence committees in the House and the Senate investigating the intelligence connections between Russia and the Trump campaign and the Trump White House, potentially. Meanwhile, we've got this investigation with the newly appointed special counsel who's going to look into that Russian thing, uh, including any, if any, criminal uh, involvement uh, by members of the Trump campaign and possibly collusion with some members of the Trump White House. We don't, we don't know where that's gonna take us in either case, but now we have two vibrant sets of investigations moving on uh, in, a, in an attempt to clear up this mess, get at the facts, and hopefully reassure the public. Yeah, let me ask you this question. Uh, all of this seems to have changed uh, with the New York Times exclusive about the Comey memo, uh, did it not? And, and I wanna ask you specifically about the memo. Uh, it's the first time that people started using possibilities, alleging that we might be talking uh, obstruction of justice. Your, your take on all this? Um, I believe there is grounds to believe uh, that uh, obstruction of justice may have occurred. Uh, when the president said to Comey, according to Comey's notes, I want you to back off the Flint thing, uh, it's in the context of possible reappointment of Comey as, per, you know, FBI director for the next six, six years. Uh, that's very close to obstruction of justice by anybody's definition. It's clear interference with an ongoing investigation compounded by the fact that he removed them and cited himself that it was because of the Russia thing. Yeah. So uh, out of Trump's own mouth, we have prima facie evidence that those actions could be construed clearly as obstruction of justice and interference in an ongoing FBI investigation. Yeah, let, let's take a listen at part of what the president had to say when he was speaking at the uh, Coast Guard to the graduates today. Uh, I want you to listen to this and then give me your reaction. Sure. Look at the way I've been treated lately, especially by the media. No politician in history, and I say this with great surety, has been treated worse or more unfairly. Now, I can imagine most, if not all, of the president's staunch supporters are saying pretty much the same thing. 
How would you address the president's accusation? Well, first of all, it, 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 the, he brings self-pity to a whole new level we've never seen before, not even under Richard Nixon. Secondly, uh, to, to decide to use a joyous occasion, the graduation of our new uh, academy graduates at the Coast Guard, to basically bemoan your plight as President of the United States is, is frankly really deplorable. But thirdly, this is an adult acting like a child, not taking responsibility for his own behavior. How can you blame the media for reacting to your actions? He's the one who sat down with Lester Holt and out of his own mouth in that interview confirmed, no, 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 no. The, the White House explanations about firing Comey because of how he handled Clinton are false. It was about the Russia thing. That wasn't the media making it up. It was Donald Trump confirming it out of his own mouth in a media interview. It's Donald Trump who decides to uh, block the American press from any access to meeting with a Russian foreign minister. Okay. Uh, and only the Russian press allowed to take a photograph. And in that meeting, apparently compromises very classified secret information provided by an allied nation. Right, we got compromising it. Uh, potentially sources. Okay. Virginia Congressman Jerry Conley, thanks again for your time. Really appreciate it. I know you guys are busy up. My pleasure, Bruce. Anytime. Okay. Now, we should point out that we've made lots of calls to the GOP, made several requests to have a Republican lawmaker join us tonight. So far, we've had no luck, and it seems we're not alone on this. We've tried tonight to get Republicans to come out and talk to us, and there are not uh, Republicans willing to go on camera.